Grace and peace be with you. Welcome to this special service from St Luke's Uniting Church, Highton. I'm Paul Stevens, the ordained minister in placement. The day this video is released is Halloween 2021. Halloween is the celebration of All Hallows Day Eve, that is All Saints Day Eve. Halloween is being made much of these days and if I had time I would love to ponder why this might be so in an apparently very secular country like Australia. But our focus in this video today is on All Saints Day itself, the day on which the church remembers those who have gone before us, especially those who have inspired us in some way to walk the way of Jesus. In this service, we will specifically remember some of the people who have died during the last year and who, we, who are in some way associated with the life and ministry of St Luke's. But you might want to use the space for some of your own reflection. Perhaps you might find that the prayers and readings help you as you remember others who have died who are important to you, people who have loved you, people you have loved. You might also find it helpful to have someone with you to share with as we go on this journey. Okay. As we light the Christ candle today, let's remember that Christ is the light of the world. And the light of Christ's love can illuminate the darkest of places. On our pilgrimage in a changing and uncertain world. We do not walk alone. The Lord is with us. We remember all those who taught us faith. That cloud of witnesses whose example burns bright in our memory. God of grace, by whose love the world exists. Touch our hearts and refresh us with your hope and joy. Holy and compassionate God, most perfect loving Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Through Christ, you proclaim the way to life in all its fullness. Through Christ, you offer us the promise of sure and certain hope of eternal life. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, you declare that your love is such that even death itself cannot overcome it. We give you thanks that you do not leave us alone as we face the mystery and the shadow of death. As today we remember people who have been precious to us and who have died, hold us in your care. Bless us with comfort and peace. Creating and forgiving God, we confess that we have not always loved as Christ has loved us. Forgive us and enable us by your grace to forgive anything that has been hurtful to us. Assure us through, that through Christ, you set us free from sin and bring healing and wholeness. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's listen now to two Bible readings read for us by Steve Singline. And by the way, I should acknowledge the fact that Linda Salome is sharing in leadership this, this, this day. Both readings that uh, you're about to hear are visions of the, promise, the promised end. Visions of how all things will end well in God. The first reading comes from the book of the ancient prophet Isaiah. These words were written hundreds of years before the time of Jesus. Immediately before the verses you're about to hear, the prophet describes God as the one who offers refuge in the midst of tribulation. And then Isaiah, as you will hear, offers a vision of God which involves God hosting the most wonderful banquet for all people. God casting aside the shroud of deep darkness that covers the nations and God overcoming death itself. The second reading is from the New Testament book of Revelation, the last book in the New Testament. In this passage, the writer John of Patmos seems to echo the words of Isaiah 
as he describes the coming of the new Jerusalem and the end of suffering, tears and death. Yep. Today's first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples. The sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. He will be his they will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word saint is a little confusing in some ways. We think of saints as giants of the faith, people who have in some way been formally given that title of saint. People like Saint Luke or Saint Francis of Assisi or Saint Teresa of Avila. And we often tend to feel that we can never live up to their example. How often have you heard someone say, I ain't no saint? Although it's worth remembering that even the best of the saints was not perfect. Like all of us, they had faults and needed the forgiveness and grace of God. It's interesting, though, that in the New Testament, St. Paul has a different understanding of the word saint. In his New Testament writings, Paul uses the term saint to describe any member of the church community. So he writes, for example, to the saints at Ephesus. In other words, to all the members of the church there. All Saints Day uh, initially came to be marked by the early church to honour the many nameless Christians who died, who died for the faith or who were notable in their commitment to the way of Christ, perhaps in the face of persecution. And as you may know, some churches celebrate the 2nd of November as well as the 1st of November. So the 1st of November is All Saints Day and then the 2nd of November they celebrate as all Souls Day, a day to remember and honour all who have died. In many churches such as ours, we tend to take the opportunity offered by All Saints Day to do both, to not only remember those who have been important examples in the faith, but as a day to remember all who have died and all who we wish to honour. In our secular and materialistic society, the reality of death is something that tends to not be mentioned or that is kept hidden from view. Our forebears would have thought this very strange. They knew from their daily experience that the writer of the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes was right when he declared that for everything there is a season 
and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. And I think I've mentioned to the congregation before that uh, my lecturers at Theological College pointed out to us that many traditional hymns contain verses about death and hope beyond death. Sometimes this is missing from more recent Christian hymns. But just think back to some of the old traditional ones like Abide With Me or Rock of Ages and you will see if you look at the words and you can find them on the internet that they very much tackle the issue of death. In the face of death, Christians still have important things to say. First of all, there is the assurance that there is no place that God is not. That even in the valley of the shadow, God is close. And even more than this, that just as Jesus wept in grief when he heard his friend Lazarus had died, God shares with us when we grieve, when we feel the pain of loss. So the first thing to note is that God is always with us. God is with us through the dark valley and beyond. The second thing that the Christian faith says in relation to, to the matter of death is that it is a ministry of the church to respond though to those who are grieving or those who are facing death. And this, of course, comes as the church seeks to love as Jesus loves. And I think the church continues to do this well. It is very much a part of the life of all Christian congregations, at least the ones I've known, to be deeply prayerful and caring for those who are on that journey into death and those who are grieving. And beyond the life of congregations, the churches support ministries to those who are at that particular point in their lives or who are journeying with them. And so we have chaplains in hospitals, aged care centres, prisons, the armed services and so on. And thirdly, the Christian faith in has a word to declare in relation to hope in death. For the Christian faith is grounded on the sure and certain hope declared in the death and resurrection of Jesus, that death does not get the last word. As John of Patmos declared, tears and death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more. So those three things, God is with us through it all. The church, out of love, the love it's received in Christ, seeks to minister to those who are on the journey towards death or who are journeying with them or who are grieving. And thirdly, the Christian faith is grounded on the hope of the resurrection. Some years ago, I was sharing in the leadership of a Bible study with a colleague and we asked those present to tell us what they thought paradise looked like. And there were many suggestions. But the funny thing was, and we hadn't colluded on this, my colleague and I came up with the same image. We both imagined paradise as the best banquet you could ever imagine. Which, of course, is an image we heard from Isaiah in our reading for today. And, of course, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we say that we taste a sense of that paradise-like meal that one day we will all share in. As we mark All Saints Day, we remember that death is not the end, that there is the sure and certain hope of eternal life. We remember those saints whose witness to Jesus looms large in the history of the church and in our own lives. And we remember and honour those folk we have known and loved who have died and who are now in God's care and keeping. Let's continue in prayer. Living God, we thank you for the gift of life eternal declared in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. We thank you for all the saints who encouraged us in the way of Jesus. But we thank you in a special way at this time for all the dear souls most precious to us who have died, who loved us and who we have loved. And we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. We now name and remember those who have died over the last year or so and who are now in God's care and keeping. 
and at the end of this naming of particular people, we'll light another candle and I invite you to make that candle your candle, the candle that, that holds the name of someone precious to you who has died and whose memory burns brightly for you and who you grieve. So we name and remember Claire Peel. Jane Govan. Dawn Ives. Alex Reed. Siros Safanajat Barbara Routley and Hugh Routley, Barbara's husband, who died just over a year ago. Theo Coomba Francis Crawford Craig Jackson Eric Main Hedley Smith We give thanks for all these precious souls and all the others who we remember now in our hearts. For all the saints who from their labours rest. The saints gone too soon before, before the fullness of their grace was truly known by human minds. The saints who were not lauded, but whose faithfulness bore generations of fruit. The saints whose witness spoke truth to power and brought forth new creations. The saints who died with doubts, questions, and hope in mystery. The saints who held to the truth through it all. The saints whose legacies are the history from which we learn how to do and be better. The saints who are only remembered by God and who rest in light perpetual. For these and so many others, we give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. And let us continue in prayer. On this holy day of memory, O Lord our God, inspire our visions so that we might see with clear eyes the hope and fullness of life that is found in you. We pray for clarity and courage 
to see and live out Christ's call for a world in which the poor are blessed, the hungry are fed, and your good news is made known. We seek healing and unfailing comfort for those persons, known and unknown, who are struggling, grieving deeply, in pain, in fear, with ill health, and we name them silently before you. By your mercy and grace, grant us wisdom for these days of remembering and of living into the coming of your future, strengthened by your witnesses in days past. O Lord, support us by your grace through all the hours of life's day. Until the shadows lengthen, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and the evening comes. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now share together in the Lord's Prayer. Hair mir, vor her ginesis, sur pieriti anunco, ye gesse arcaitunco, ye ritin gamco, vor bes her gines ye hergri, zhat mir hana bazort. Dur me zaisor, tog me zis bardis mir, vor bes yev meik togunk mirot bardavanat, yev midan yirizmez i portutyun, ail pergia i charen, zikoye arkayutyun yev zorutyun, yev park havidyanas. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who were. Uh, not aware that uh, was Armenian in which that uh, the prayer was 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 prayed, thanks to Shegek. Just uh, a few notices to share at this point in the service. First of all, um, to say that uh, coming up this week we have a, a regular eight o'clock Zoom prayer meeting. So those of you who are interested and perhaps haven't come along for a while or haven't come along ever, if you just uh, check our website, you'll be able to find out how to connect with, the, with that uh, gathering. And actually after this service on a Sunday morning, at ten, well, at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, doesn't matter when you watch the service, there's also an opportunity to join with the community of St Luke's on Zoom. And details again of that are available on the website. We have um, one particular notice that we've been asked to share and that's uh, the support that happens each year for the leprosy mission and Val, Gr Valerie Grills organises that and you'll see the details on the slide that's before you including her contact details which she's happy to share and she'd be very keen to hear from people who'd like to order some cards and you can see a couple of examples on the screen. Well, of course, because we're meeting still uh, electronically, it's a little hard to, to bring gifts of money to the front of the church. But let's just take a moment or two in response to the good news of Jesus Christ to offer ourselves and our gifts again in the service of, uh, of Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, you have given us more than we asked for and more than we deserve. May we show a like generosity in all that we do for you and for our neighbours, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If something has touched you deeply during this service, please don't just hold it to yourself. Take the opportunity to perhaps share it with someone, perhaps someone with you, or perhaps someone that you trust that you that nearby, because sometimes things are brought up during a service like this that, can, that, can, that need to be talked about. So could I encourage you, if you feel that something has been touched inside you and, and you 
need to do something about it, don't, don't hesitate. Talk to someone that you trust and share with, what you fe- share with them what you're feeling. After the blessing, we'll have a, a, a rendition of the hymn, I Will Sing a Song of the Saints of God by a, a couple of members of our choir. Friends, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. Church or in trades or in shops.